G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. Today we're going to continue the series on L2 1943 ground attacks. In this one we're going to be looking at how to use the VV-1 site to conduct rocket attacks. When you're conducting rocket attacks using the VV-1 site, you're going to be deciding what range to use first. This will be between 400 and 1600 meters. And then once you've decided on the range, you're going to align the gun site post with the range you're going to fire the rockets at. And this will help create the site picture you want. So here's a couple of examples. On the left will be the rocket site picture when you're going to fire them at 1600 meters. And on the right hand side is going to be when you fire them at 800 meters. Now you can use the VV-1 to range a target as well, but you need to know the target size. To do it, you're going to multiply the length by 1000 and then divide it by the number of mils it takes up in the site. Now those lines I've highlighted are 15 mils long each, with the pans of 4 being about 6 meters long. If we were to occupy the whole line and we do the math, it'll come out to be about 400 meters away. As a general rule though, if the tank occupies the circle, it's about 800 meters away, and if it occupies the length of the line, it's about 400 meters away. To conduct rocket attacks in the L2 with the VV-1 site, we're first going to align the post with the firing distance as we saw before, then we'll configure the rocket firing sequence, and the initial altitude is going to be 1500 meters. We'll then begin a wing over towards the target and pull the throttle to idle, and we'll slow down to about 200 to 220 km per hour, and we'll initiate a 30 degree dive with our gun sight aligned on the target. By the time we fire at the range, we should be doing about 400 to 450 km per hour. For the rocket's attack, we're going to be using the same targets as the bombing video. So we're down there at about 11 o'clock, there's some oil tanks in a warehouse which we'll be firing on. So our initial R2 is going to be about 1500 meters above the ground. And so now we'll set the rocket firing sequence. Now the rocket control is on the left hand side. So we use left windows R to change the firing mode. And I'm going to set it up so we fire them in pairs. So we plan on firing these at 1600 meters. So looking at our 1600 meter sight picture, we have the circle lined up with the 1600 meter range. So we're good. And we're coming up to be a beam of the target so we can have a quick look and see where we are. We want to try and set it up so we fire all these rockets in the one pass. So I want to be lining up in a way that's going to allow me to fire the first pair and then pull up and fire the next pair at the other target. So we're starting to get ready and reducing the power a little bit. Bring it back to idle. We're going to maintain our altitude to help us slow down to that entry speed of about 200 kilometers per hour. And as we reach that point, I'm going to continue rolling towards the target. Lower the nose. Then we'll initiate our approximately 30 degree dive while keeping the gun sight aligned on our initial target. Now 1600 meters is on the long end of the range of these rockets, so you're better off using this against large, easier to hit targets such as buildings like this. So I'm guessing when about 1600 meters I'm going to fire and pull up and fire at the next target. And then we can just pull off and then you can set up for some ground strafing runs or bombing if you need to. You've got two main rockets to choose from. You have ROFS 132s, these are high explosive. And then you have RBS 82s, and these are armor piercing. I always prefer taking the high explosive rockets when I can, because they have a much larger splash damage, which means I'm going to need less accuracy in order to hit a target or destroy it. However, if you take the armor piercing against armored targets, it's a little bit harder to get the kills with these, because they have a much smaller splash damage area, which means you're going to need more accuracy. Alright, so now we're going to look at how to do a rocket attack against some armored vehicles. Again, looking down on our lower left for the setup. We have an armored column over there, we're going to attack. So we're going to set up the rocket firing sequence again to fire in pairs. And then we'll continue flying along at 1500 meters above the ground until we get ready to do our wing over. Now the last shot was at 1600 meters, but we're going to bring it in to 800 meters for this example. So we can see we've got ourselves lined up with the 800 meter sight picture. So we're coming up to be perpendicular, getting ready to attack. So we bring the power back to idle, maintaining our altitude until we slow down to our entry speed. Remember, it's going to be 200 to 220 kilometers per hour. And once we reach that point, we continue rolling towards the target and we'll lower the nose and we'll initiate that dive. Now, remembering the rule of thumb earlier, when the armor enters the circle and fills it up completely, that's going to be about 800 meters. But if it was on the line, it would be 400. So when the tank fills the ring, I'm going to fire, pull up and fire again. 
then you can pull off and set up for another attack. Your rocket accuracy depends on how good you are at estimating range to the targets. You can of course just use the general rule of thumb for armoured vehicles, otherwise you can use your Mark 1 eyeball to determine the range, or if you know the exact length of the target you're shooting at, you can apply the formula, and this way you can set up your sight picture for the desired range you want to shoot at. I hope you enjoyed this video, and that will help improve the accuracy of the rockets. And I'm always interested in hearing from you guys, so feel free to leave a comment and make sure to be a subscriber, and this way you can see new videos as I release them.